In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cool jellyfish from start to finish using the iPad and Procreate, just like all my videos too. It's all in real time, so no time lapse, no edits. You get to follow along every step of the way from start to finish, and we've got a lot of stuff to cover. I'm gonna go over using clipping masks, alpha lock, Gaussian blur, the transform menu with distort and warp, saturation adjustments. There's a lot to cover. So if you wanna follow along step by step and draw with me, keep watching. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cool jellyfish. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out using my cartooning pack for Procreate and the standard Inker Streamline, which is pretty much my go-to brush. And then for the color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can find this for free on my website. If you go to bjdell.com underneath the YouTube reference materials page, there's a link to this along with a video at the top of the page that walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate if you never have before. All that's linked down in the description below. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's get started. I'm gonna start using this pink here for the body or the upper portion of the jellyfish. We'll start out just by drawing a circle here by holding down the Apple Pencil and then holding down my other finger on the screen, it locks it into a perfect circle. And then I can just drag and drop the color in here. Now, of course, this is not what the body or upper portion of a jellyfish looks like. We need to change it up a little bit, but we're gonna use the transform tool to do this. Sometimes I think this is easier to do than trying to draw everything by hand, especially something like the curve of the jellyfish, because once you get back up, to that initial starting point, you're gonna to have to connect them. You might have some shaky lines there. So the transform works wonders if you need it. So let's use that now, going up there to the arrow. We're gonna go ahead and go to distort. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of drag the sides and the bottom out here to flatten it out a little bit there. Kind of goes out wider at the bottom. And then I'm gonna use warp and I'm gonna pull up from the center here and just kind of flatten that out a little bit. Pulling from the sides, just to kind of get the shape that I'm going for here. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, using uniform, I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this. I don't want it directly there in the center. I kind of want him at an angle here. So we'll have him coming across the canvas kind of diagonally here. Let's move that up here. Using that green note here, we can kind of twist and turn it. And then using warp again, now that I've got it where I want him, I can kind of fine tune it a little bit more now that it's changed position there. Just gets to look a little bit better where it's out on the canvas now. And we got it locked in, so there we go. We're good there. Next up, let's go ahead and work on the tentacles. So for this, I'm gonna come up to my layers menu Hitting the plus button, we're gonna make a new layer, and then holding down on this layer, we're gonna drag it underneath layer one and let it go there. Now from here, once again, still sticking with that same brush, the standard Inker Streamline, that's the one we're gonna use. I like this brush because number one, the pressure sensitivity, and then also the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil itself, you can get some really nice tapered lines. To achieve this, basically just have to start out a line with really light pressure and then press harder as you go into the line all in one motion. Now, if you do purchase these brushes, if you have them, you get the exact same settings that I'm using here. I know a lot of people starting out don't get the same results and wanna know pressure sensitivity settings here in Procreate, the pressure curve, all that stuff is set to default in Procreate on my end. So if you're there on your end with default, all the other settings are exactly the same. That's kind of the idea behind purchasing brushes like these that are already made. You have the exact settings. So if you're not getting these results out of there, it just takes practice. You just gotta get comfortable with when to apply pressure, when to let up pressure. And that's what we're gonna use then for these tentacles. So starting out then, I'm just gonna start with a really light pressure and go and press harder as I come up there into the top. And we'll just kind of continue that technique here as we go through 
adding these tentacles. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. We've got enough in there. So next up, let's go ahead and start to add some values here and some tonal shifts. So to do this, we're gonna go ahead and go up here to layer one. We'll start there. And first thing, I think I want it more at an angle. So I'm gonna select both of these. So if you slide multiple layers to the right, you'll see they're both blue now. From here, I can go up to the arrow and using uniform before I get too much further into this. You can just kind of twist him around and get him a little bit more kind of coming off in the direction that I want. Of course, now I'm going to have to warp him just a tad bit more here. Got to change the position. Have that top come up a little bit more into that corner. All right. So this is where we're going to start. I think I'm going to have the light source coming in from this top right hand corner. So we'll have kind of a, a highlight here and then shadows here on the back and then of course underneath here where the tentacles come out of. So we'll select this layer and then I'm gonna tap that and set it as alpha lock. So that allows us to color in on this layer. It doesn't go outside of anything that's colored in here so we won't hit any of the white and it's all on the same layer. So coming back up to my color palette then, I've got this darker purple color right here. We'll use that to begin with. And I'm just gonna pull in a shadow down here on the bottom and around. Right. Of course that looks really basic right now, but we're gonna kind of blend it in a little bit. And for this, I like to use the adjustments menu and going to Gaussian Blur, we can select that. We can slide our Apple Pencil to the right, and you can see now we get a little bit more of a three-dimensional look there. I think probably around 30, 31% looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and lock that in there. Let's do the same thing then for the tentacles here. So tapping on layer two, once we're back in the layers menu, we're gonna go ahead and set that as alpha lock as well. Come back, have our brush loaded there. And we'll start to pull in the shadow here. Once again, back up to Gaussian Blur under the Adjustments menu. Slide this to the right. And we've got that nice shift there with those. About 22%, I think looks pretty good, maybe 20. Okay. Now, I also want to make these look a little bit more three-dimensional as well, but to do that, I wanna use a separate layer. I don't wanna do it all on the same because I wanna add a blur, but with these, they're gonna be thinner lines, so they're not gonna take as much of a blur. So if you are doing this Gaussian blur technique on your own designs, if you have an area that's larger that you're using it on, and then you have an area that's smaller, split them up between layers because the blur percentage for one is gonna to be too much. If it's big, it's gonna to be too much for the small lines. And once again, if it's a small line, the blur percentage that you need to make those look good, it's gonna to be too much on, uh, or too little on the big part if you use it for the small part. So we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. We're gonna make a new layer. And we're gonna tap this one and we're gonna set this as clipping mask. So clipping mask works a lot like alpha lock. However, it's on a separate layer. So here we were on the same layer. If we would have to go back and fix this or erase, we would erase everything. With the clipping mask setting with this, we can go on a separate layer, it's non-destructive. So if we need to make changes, if we need to erase, it's not gonna affect layer two. So now that we've got that done with my brush, I'm gonna come in here and just start hitting the sides of this, each tentacle here on the left. Just bring these down. And finally here. All right. So with that set then, we can go ahead and go up to the adjustments menu and Gaussian blur again, slide this to the right and you see we get that really nice three dimensional effect there. Now let's add some highlights in there as well. So once again, a new layer here, we're gonna tap that. 
set it as clipping mask again. And then for our color, we're gonna switch over to white now. I'm gonna do this kind of more towards the center here. Kind of falling a little bit towards the right there, but then also a little bit more towards the center as well. So we don't want it on the edge like we had the other one. Just want it here on the middle. All right, so now that we have those, once again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, slide those to the right, and you can see now those start to have that three-dimensional effect there. We're gonna go ahead and do some up here as well, but we'll wait a little bit before we get up there as far as adding the, the highlights. So I'm gonna come back up now to the layers. Let's go to layer one, and once again, make a new layer here. We're gonna tap this and set this as clipping mask. Kinda of wanna add in a little bit extra of a shadow in here. So back up to our color palette and that purple that we were using before. I'll zoom in a little bit better so we can see it. I'm just gonna kinda of pull in kind of a edge shadow here. It's gonna make a, a little bit of a ledge look kind of falling back in and then underneath there. So we'll slide that to about 16% and lock it in. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and add the eyes. So I'm gonna twist the canvas here, make this a little bit more centered so you can see it better instead of looking at an angle. So back up to the layers menu, we're gonna make a, another new layer. I'm gonna come up here to the color palette and we're gonna choose this kind of creamy off-white yellow color here. With that selected, we're just gonna draw in another circle holding down our finger to lock it in, and then, oops, I touched the other screen there. Drag and drop. So we've got the, the color in there. From here, of course, if you wanted to grab the arrow, uniform selected, you could kind of make it bigger, smaller, get it positioned exactly where you want it, totally up to you how you want to do it. But I think that looks pretty good there. Okay. So now let's make this look a little bit more three-dimensional. So we're gonna go ahead and tap this and set this as alpha lock. And then coming up here to the color palette again, we've got this orange color right here on the top row. We'll use this and kind of coming around this back edge here, just kind of make a crescent curve here around that back. And then we're gonna come back up here to the color palette, use the brown here and get along the bottom there. Now, once again, back up to adjustments and Gaussian blur. We're gonna slide this to the right and you're gonna see it starts to give us that kind of three dimensional feel to the eyeball. Got that about 20%. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add like we did here. I'm gonna add that technique here to the eye as well. So another new layer here. Go ahead and tap that, set that as clipping mask. We're not really gonna go outside of the, the lines here, so don't even really need to set it as clipping mask, but once again, just kind of a crescent shape there with really thin tapers at the sides and the ends. Back up to adjustments, Gaussian blur, slide this to the right. We'll see now, it just kind of adds in that extra effect there. I could go a little bit darker here Say about 12% so I can see it. I'm gonna grab the arrow now and with warp selected. I'm gonna kind of bring this around just a little bit so I have more manual control over it. And then coming up here to the layers menu, tapping on N for blend mode, I can drop the opacity now of this so it's not too dark. I just want it to be just that really kind of faint look to it. And once we have that locked in, just go ahead and tap the screen and we're good. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and add the irises and the pupils in here. So to do this, once again, coming up here, new layer at the very top, going up to our color palette here, we're gonna choose the light blue here on the top row. We'll just make, let's get another circle here, hold them down to lock it in, drag and drop the color. 
And then using the arrow again with uniform, we can just transform this and get it to exactly where we want it to be at. All right, so there we go. Now for the pupil. So we're gonna slide this one to the left and we're gonna duplicate it. Instead of redrawing this, we can just duplicate this and then drag and drop the new color. So next to that light blue, I've got the darker blue here. Drag and drop this in. Once again, grabbing that arrow, transforming this down, and getting it there towards the center. Looks good. So now let's go ahead and do the same technique here for the inside there. So back up here to the layers menu, we can go ahead and pinch these together now to combine them, the iris and the pupil. They can be all on one. You can pinch or you can tap the top one and merge down. That also makes them all in one layer. So next up, let's go ahead and tap this and hit this is alpha lock. Actually, no, we're going to we're going to go ahead and clipping mask this one. So let's turn that alpha lock off. Let's make a new layer. We'll tap this, hit clipping mask. And then coming back up to the color palette, let's go ahead and choose this blue over here, the one next to what we used for the pupil there. We'll just come around the back side here. And then back to the color palette, the darker one, I just want a little bit of the darker here on the edge. All right. Now that we've got that done, back up here to adjustments, Gaussian blur, slide that to the right. You can see now we've got that same kind of spherical look to the eye there. Okay, those are good. Now we can go ahead and combine all these eye ones right here. So they're all on one now. Let's go ahead and add in the highlights. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer here. I'm gonna tap this, set it as clipping mask. So once again, we're on top of the eye here. And then coming up to the color palette, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to white. That's what we'll use for the highlights. And just with a press here and here real light, we'll get a couple of dots in there for the shine. Once again, adjustments. Gaussian blur, we'll slide that to the right. So we've got a nice little glare there. All right, let's go ahead and pinch these together now. And I'm gonna go ahead now and make the right eye. Instead of redrawing everything, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate this one. So we're gonna slide this one to the left. We're gonna duplicate it. And then we're gonna grab the arrow and we're gonna flip it horizontally. Now, because the canvas is on, or the, the design is on an angle, we've got the canvas kind of changed around right now. When we flip horizontally, it's not gonna be a left to right kind of flip. So we're gonna have to move this around by using that green node here at the top, kind of change the position to get that to line up from left to right. All right. That looks good, maybe over a little bit here to the right. Okay, now we can go ahead and combine these just to free up some layers. So we'll pinch those together. Now I wanna get the highlights in the actual eyeball portion, the white of the eyes. So let's do another new layer here. And we're gonna tap that, and you guessed it, we're gonna set it to clipping mask. I'm gonna come in here and just add in some bigger white areas there. And the reason why I didn't do this on the one is because I wanted to have them at different portions or different sections of the eyes. If we flipped them, it would look a little unnatural. So now we can go ahead and do the blur. So back up to adjustments, Gaussian blur, sliding here to the right. Now we've got that nice shine coming out of those. Okay. So we've got the eyes. Let's make those pop a little bit more. So let's pinch these together. Up here at our color palette, let's change this over to that dark purple that we used for the shadows. So we're gonna select that color. And then we're gonna come back up to the uh, layers menu and we're going to duplicate the eyes again. So we're gonna slide those to the left, 
we're going to duplicate. And then the bottom one here, we're going to go ahead and tap on that. We're going to select it. And then we're going to tap on it again and hit fill layer. So you see now we've got the eyes that you see here and then we've got a solid purple here underneath. So we're going to blur this, but first, because these are set to alpha lock, these are set to alpha lock. And if we blur, once again, it doesn't go outside of what you have colored in on this section. So blurring does nothing. It keeps it locked to that section that's uh, colored in right here. So we need to turn off alpha lock or our blur is not going to work. So with that done, adjustments menu, Gaussian blur. We'll slide this to the right and you see you start to get that kind of inset look now from those. This is a little bit lighter than what I want, so we can do that select and fill again, and it's going to darken it up. So if we tap on that and hit select, tap on it again and hit fill layer, you see that darkens up now. That looks just a little bit better. Cool. All right. So now let's make them pop a little bit more by adding in some shadows here underneath, some kind of bags under the eyes. We're going to stick with that same color, that purple that we were using, and then we're going to go ahead and make a new layer here underneath the eyes, and we'll just kind of pull in just a tapered line here, so I'm going to drop the size of this to about 10%. Let's taper it on both ends here, just like that. And then we can use Gaussian Blur again under Adjustments, sliding that to the right, and we can get just that nice little bags there under the eyes, kind of makes them pop out a little bit more. All right, pull up here a little bit so we can see. Next up, let's do the mouth. So back up to our Layers menu, one more new layer. And then I want to drop the size of this down quite a bit. So probably about 2%. And let's just draw a mouth here in the middle. Just a solid line there across. Maybe a couple of little dimple lines here on the sides where the mouth kind of creases in. Now, of course, this looks a little hard line compared to everything else. So we're going to blur this just a tad bit. So if we go to Adjustments and Gaussian Blur here, Slide this to the right and maybe about four or five percent, I think looks pretty good there. Go ahead and lock that in. And now let's do a shadow underneath there. So new layer, jump the brush size back up to nine, ten percent. I'll just get a little kind of tapered line there underneath for the bottom lip. Back up to adjustments and Gaussian blur. Slide that to the right. It's going to make that pop. All right, pull them back out then. That's what we have. So I think that looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to blur that just a little bit less. Kind of lost a little bit too much. So let's go down to uh, about 6 7%. That looks a little bit better. All right. Next up, I, I think overall it looks pretty good so far, but the body and the tentacles here just need a little bit of texture in them. So I'm going to switch now to another one of my brush sets that are available on Gumroad right now. Uh, it's my texture pack here. And I think for this, let's go ahead and use either specs or spots. Either one would work, I think. I think I want to use spots. I'm going to stick with that same purple here. And then starting here at the, the top, the head, layer one, we'll just color it on that layer. It's still set to alpha lock. I've got the opacity, I want that to be pretty low, about 30%. I'm just going to go real light. So I don't want to go too heavy because I want the texture to come in. But since I'm using the same color as the shadows here, I don't want to lose those shadows. So I just want the texture to be kind of like a hint coming around here. So you can kind of see that popping up. that around and then if you want to you can also switch over to white and then kind of add in some extra spots and textures there that one's kind of killing what I just did there though so just 
to be very sparing with that. I think it looks pretty good. We can do the same thing then with the tentacles. So if we come down here, I'll switch back to that darker purple. And back up to our layers menu now. And layer two here, we can come back in with that brush again and just kind of, like I said, real lightly hitting that. And just get those textures in there. So it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. I think now too, I'm gonna to drop the opacity here of the white just a little bit. So N here for the white, drop that down just a tad bit so it's not so stark against there. And I think that looks a little bit better. Okay. So now we're ready to do some highlights here at the top. We already did the, the white here at the bottom. So once again, we want to use different layers for highlights because I'm going to blur more for the uh, bigger areas than the smaller areas. So let's start underneath the eyes. We can go ahead and make a new layer here. And we're going to switch then the color palette. We're going to switch over to white here. And let's start with the small ones first. Just go ahead and... I need to switch my brush though. I need to switch back to the cartooning sets and the standard ink or streamline. Go ahead and pull some taper lines here underneath. Make it a little bit thicker at the beginning. So pressing harder at the beginning. And then lighter at the end. Can do one here down the center too. Maybe one here on the lip. All right. Then go into adjustments and Gaussian blur. Sliding to the right. So we get to where we want to be. I think there looks pretty good, about 12% looks pretty good. All right, another new layer then, back up to our layers menu. New layer here, go ahead and hit some around here. So I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit bigger now, about 18%. Okay, I'm gonna pull in a highlight there. And let's go ahead and do maybe some oval ones here on the cheek. Back up to adjustments and Gaussian blur. I'm sliding these to the right then. I think that looks pretty good, about 15% there. Pull them back out, you can kind of see what we're left with. And I think that's good. All right, finally then, I'm gonna bring out a few of these shadows just a tad bit more. And we can do this with the spots now. If we go up to our colors menu, our color palette, this far right, I've got the really dark purple here. I'm going to switch my brush then back to my texture pack, and we'll do the specs on this one. And then on layer one here, I'll just kind of come in on the back side here and just bring these shadows out a little bit more with that spec brush. We can do the same thing then, switching over to the tentacles here, layer two. Let's go in a little bit darker there underneath to bring that out and fading it down. I'm going to drop the size of this just a little bit, a little bit too big there underneath. All right, and there we go. So I think that's pretty much it then for the the jellyfish itself, the body and the tentacles and everything. So let's work on a background now. So if we come up here to our layers menu, let's make a new layer and drag it down underneath the very bottom here. So it's all the way at the last of the list. And then we're gonna come up here to our color palette and I've got this dark blue here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and drag and drop that right there. And then coming back up to our colors, we're going to go ahead and switch to this lighter blue here. I'm going to switch my brush now back to my cartooning set and that streamline. And let's just do a circle here in the middle. Holding down to lock it in, drag and drop the color. Now if you're getting everything filled in, that means that your color drop threshold is turned up too high. These blues are pretty close together. So in that case, if this is happening, you'll see this is really high here. If you drop this down, for me, it's about 32.5 where it stops filling everything in. 
but that's how you can fix that. So if it's not filling in to the edge of your lines or if it's filling in too much, keep your Apple Pencil held down and just shift it from side to side. Now that we've got that, let's go back up to our color palette and choose this darker blue here. And let's do this around the edge, kind of having this hit all the sides here, just like that. Then we'll just drag and drop. Once again, it's filling in everything, so I need to bring it down. Just want it to fill in those kind of triangles there. I don't want it to fill in everything, so I think that looks good. Now we're going to go back up to our adjustments menu, go to Gaussian Blur again. We're going to slide this to the right. And you're gonna see, hey, look at that. We get a nice kind of gradient there. Almost like a burst of color coming out of the center. It's up to you how dark you wanna go with it. Uh, I think 67% for me looks pretty good, but I'll leave that up to you. All right, so that looks cool. Next up, let's go ahead and add some bubbles in here. So if we go up to our layers menu again and make a new layer, I'm gonna switch my color over to white. And then with my brush, I'm gonna switch this over to my bold anchor. And for bubbles, we just have to tap either hard or light for different sizes. This is nice, once again, pressure sensitivity because instead of changing the size, every single brush or every single bubble, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is change that brush size once and then just controller tapping. And to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional too, we'll do two different layers of bubbles. So let's drop the opacity on these. So if we go up to our layers menu and hit N for blend mode and drop this down, say about 14% or 31% uh, looks pretty good. I read the 14 from there. So there's that. And then we're gonna make another new layer now for bubbles. And then we'll change the opacity here. We'll have these be either darker or lighter. So that's gonna add some extra depth by having the, the different opacities here. It's just gonna to help to kind of make that depth of field look a little bit more believable and a little bit more real. All right, so now we can go ahead and come back up to our layers menu. And I'm just doing these haphazardly, so wherever you wanna put them, and we'll drop these down, maybe lighter, maybe about 14%. And then our initial ones here, let's make those just a little bit brighter here. So maybe about 42%. So you can see now it really looks like there's a foreground and a background there. Let's go ahead and pinch these together and combine them now. And going in here with our eraser, if we just use our standard anchor streamline, we can just add in some reflections on these just by erasing. So we've got that kind of bubbly look to them. You can do circles like this, or you can do you know, little tapered curves like that. Do the tapered ones, you're gonna to have to zoom in quite a bit, and I don't wanna zoom in too much on this, so I'm not gonna to do too many tapered ones, but you get the idea. So there we go. We've got the bubbles. I think that looks pretty cool. Finally here, let's go ahead and add in some light streaks here. Like we've got the, the water sitting on top of here. We've got the sun coming down into the ocean. So to do this, let's go up to our layers menu again. Let's go to layer 13 and make a new layer on top of that one. And still using the same brush that we were. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit smaller here, about 14%. Let's just do, do some kind of tapered lines here coming from that top corner where we had the light source coming in. And then adjustments and Gaussian blur. Slide that to the right. And then one more layer for some thinner ones. I'm gonna switch back over my brush now to the standard anchor streamline. We'll just have some thinner ones coming down here. So we've got the, the thick ones initially, and now we've got some thin ones. Adjustments, Gaussian blur. Slide these to the right. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Finally then, I'm just gonna make a new layer here and sign this guy. 
and we will be done with today's tutorial. And here's one of the pitfalls, I think, of making a color palette before I even do a design for the videos, is I think the background here is just a little bit too dark. We need it to pop a little bit more. So let's fix that at the very last here. So let's go back up to our layers menu and layer 13 here. I'm gonna go up here to the adjustments menu and go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And let's turn up the saturation all the way on this thing. You see that just makes it pop a little bit more. It livens up the entire design and I think really just kind of finishes it off. So there we go, another tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you got some helpful tips out of it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Also, if you guys take part in any of these tutorials, if you follow along with the videos and you're on Instagram or Twitter, I definitely wanna see what you came up with. So share your work on there. I super encourage it. Just make sure you tag me at BJ Dell so I can check it out. Love going through the feed and seeing all of your work based on these videos. It makes me smile and it's so cool. So thanks again for that. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com. And that's it for today's video. So until next time, keep creating.